And um, finally, we also have um, security systems, phone systems, your communication to the outside world is affected by power. Um, if you have cordless phones in your home, they're not gonna work when the power goes out. If you have a cell phone, it'll work until the battery dies and then you have to try to find a place to recharge it. Um, the security systems, a lot of people say, well, I've got backup, you know, I've got a battery in there to back me up. Well, the battery is going to die in about two days. So again, your security system then isn't working. And of course, the computers, like Ed um, mentioned, a lot of people end up working out of their homes, particularly during a disaster. And if they're out of power, they're out of business. So that's a big issue. If you're my favorite it is uh, the sump pumps. I've had customers tell me, ah, oh, I'm not worried about it. I got a battery backup on my sump pump. I say, great, what are you gonna do tomorrow? Because you're not gonna get the one, two they use from a backup battery on a pump that's really trying to save your house. You need to get some kind of powerful backup system that's gonna keep refueling itself to keep that pump pumping the water out of your house. Exactly, and that, like I mentioned, um, that's something where people are investing these days. They're really putting a lot of money into basements, and they're putting entertainment rooms, expensive, um, I've heard of basketball courts in the basement. Um, they're investing a lot of money in that basement, and if they're investing that much money, they should absolutely be investing a little bit in a generator to protect it, because that's one of the most vulnerable areas in the house. Um, another area is the well pumps. Um, people who are well water, will not be able to flush their toilet or have fresh water if the power goes out. So those are big issues for people to consider. And basically this boils down to it's a huge opportunity for you as um, in the construction industry to offer this um, to your customers and um, they're not only going to um, provide extra revenue for you, but they're also really gonna appreciate your concern and your extra thought of taking care of their needs because boy are they gonna appreciate that when they're neighbors don't have power and they do. Yeah, and if you're a contractor setting up a house, also consider things, uh, you may not want to choose an electric dryer. You always want to go with a propane dryer or a natural gas dryer. That way the generator can go to other areas of your house and help power that rather than to spend a lot of its resources to an electrical dryer. So remember, I told you at the beginning, things are changing. You have to start changing your designs and propane gas dryers uh, may be a great addition to homes that you would start putting in as standard equipment. So keep in mind the propane fuel can help the generator help you get more power into your house. Exactly. So that is a perfect lead in for talking about the types of generators that are available for the residential market. Um, the, there's basic styles of generators are either going to be portable or standby. And there's also off-grid generators that are used for people who are not on the utility grid whatsoever. Um, of the types of um, application, you have um, you need to check, consider the wattage output of the generator, the cooling methods, as well as the fuel types they use. So when you're looking at that, the wattage is going to be um, basically based on the size of the home that you're backing up and what type of a situation. We're gonna talk a little bit about select systems versus whole house backup um, as we go in a couple of slides forward. Um, but you also need to think about, are you going to use an air-cooled generator or liquid-cooled? Um, air-cooled generators are typically up to about 20 kW. Um, they're gonna be a little less expensive and they use air to cool the engine. Um, when you get over 20 kW, you're moving up to a more robust engine that's um, more industrial strength. It's more of an automotive style engine that uses a radiator to um, cool the engine. So those are your two basic types. And, and think about that. If, we, if we're stressing right now that the air cooled, like up to 20 kW, can do your house, that's tying back into what we're saying learn how to stretch the power coming from that generator. Don't have an electric oven, have the propane or natural gas oven, get the propane dryer system set up. So the more you can use other fuels to work for you in a power outage, the more this generator can do for you at a lower cost for installation. Absolutely. Then when you're thinking about other um, factors in the generator selection, one issue may be sound. Um, if you're looking at portable generators, some of them can be very loud. Some of them will run over 80 decibels. Um, a standby generator tends to be more the sound level of a central air conditioner. So typically not as offensive to your neighbors, um, not as hard on your ears if you're going to be having, listening to that at, during an extended outage. I, I um, know you might be mad at me, but I, I, she gets mad when I say this, but I have my own reasons for wanting a quiet generator. And one of them is you want to make sure your neighbors don't hear it, not so they get upset, 
more so they don't know you have standby electrical power at your host, because next thing you know, they'll hear your generator and come running over. So a quiet generator will keep your host a little more private as well. Absolutely. So um, going deeper into which of the types you should select for home backup power, one option is portable power. Um, Portables definitely have an application. They are a smaller generator. They usually will um, tap out at about 15 kW. Um, they're great for camping. They're great for sports events. Um, they're, they're nice for an application where they're portable. You need to move them around. They're not the best choice for home backup power. And the reason why is that they basically use gasoline. Um, gasoline is um, something that you're going to need about 70 gallons of gasoline to power you up for five days during a power outage. Um, lots of luck trying to store that. Um, gasoline expires, it is um, dangerous to store that much gasoline, and if you say, well, I'll just run down to the gas station and get more fuel, check your gas station and see if they have backup power, because if they don't, they're not pumping gas. So you could end up out of power um, just as easily as if you hadn't thought about it at all. With the fuel issue, I mean, it also makes sense to me, now that I'm past 50, physically, I don't think I can pour 70 gallons of gas into a generator without an issue here or there. And remember, you have a hot engine, you might spill someone, uh, some, some of it on the ground. You might also uh, spill some of it on the generator itself, which could cause an unsafe position of uh, having the fuel. If you have spilled fuel on an engine, who knows what could happen. Plus, the unit has to run outside. Don't try running a portable in the garage, or else you'll have uh, even more serious issues. Absolutely. And that um, brings up a couple of the, um, the reasons why, again, it's not the best solution for um, your home. Um, it has to be manually operated, so if you're not home, your house is not powered. Um, that means in that ice storm where you may be safely on vacation in Florida, you might be coming back home to frozen pipes, or the reverse, you may be coming back to a melted freezer if it's, if it's a hot day. So um, again, manual operation, and you're gonna have to um, refuel it several times during the um, day, and that means going inside and outside during the storm. So in contrast to that, you have standby generators. Standby generators are monitoring your power 24-7. They're completely automatic. So even if you aren't home, you have a transfer switch that's monitoring utility power. If it goes out, it's going to sense that, send a signal to start up your generator, transfer the power over the generator, and automatically that um, power is restored without the homeowner having to do anything to um, start it up. It also is going to be permanently installed. That means you have a professional doing it, which means that there aren't as many risks of somebody um, putting it in the garage or putting it next to a window. It's gonna be in the right place, it's gonna be safe. The homeowner isn't touching anything. Their life just goes on with all their power running as if nothing had happened. They're not touching extension cords, they're not refueling. Um, they're, they're running on liquid propane or natural gas, so they um, aren't handling fuel at all. Yeah, the, those, of course, are self-feeding fuels. So as long as you have a storage of fuel going to the unit, that unit's gonna run for as long as you need it. And we're gonna get into some of the fuels also that can run these generators. But remember, if this is a standby generator, and basically it's your own portable electric supply in the back, it does make sense in a lot of cases to have your own propane tank, because now that's your fuel supply, where you don't have to worry about it being cut off by someone else other than yourself. And the other things it does that we didn't talk about yet is it provides a cleaner power. And by clean, I'm not meaning green, although it is a greener application, but I mean the power quality is cleaner. It's a better power quality for sensitive electronics. Um, there are products um, such as plasma screen TVs, computers, um, that are gonna be damaged if the power quality that is coming into them is not a nice clean source with, with tight voltage regulation, frequency regulation, um, harmonic distortion needs to be minimal, um, or else those are gonna get damaged. And there are some products that won't even operate on a, a, a widely variable power quality. So um, we've heard about air compressors that won't work. Um, and that's, that's something that will 
will happen if you have portable air, uh, a portable generator may not provide that cleanliness of power. So it's something you definitely want to look for in your standby generator. So the other type of generators are off-grid generators. These are very similar to standby generators, but um, they're used to back up a solar power system or wind power system, or they may be used in applications where there is no utility power at all and it's the sole so source of power for the home. Um, these may be designed slightly different than a standby generator because they're usually um, called upon to operate more frequently and they have to run for longer durations than a standby application. So again, they may have a, light, a slightly different design. They may also have um, a different warranty. But other than that, they're very similar to a regular standby generator. Now, how many uh, people do we have associated with uh, Lee Green, the Lee Green Associates, Lee Green AD? Oh, well, that's good. Okay, this is something that could be very useful to you. Right now, this trend in construction is to get all your LEED credentials. I just got the LEED of Green Associates, and one thing, Melody, that they're talking about is exactly what you just mentioned here. There is going to be more and more on-site power systems used for the new homes coming up for the future. So these generators right now are going to play an important role into letting homes get built to the green standards. Excellent. So that leads us into the fuel choices available on generators. Um, gasoline is usually the choice used for portable generators. Um, it's great for sh um, short trips or day use, but we talked about some of the drawbacks. Um, it's very volatile, um, so storing it can be an issue, and it also degrades over time. Um, so you're, um, unless you're refreshing your supply, um, you may find that you don't have um, a good gas anymore, and that can make your engine run poorly. Um, there's also oxidation issues, and um, we mentioned that it, for a five-day outage, it would take 70 gallons of gas. Um, another option that you'll see is diesel generators. Um, diesel may be an excellent choice for a larger industrial application. Um, it's something that's um, relatively inexpensive, and it does um, allow you to store large quantities. So a lot of people will turn to diesel for those applications. But again, it's not the ideal ch um, choice for a home standby generator. And the reasons are a lot of the same issues that you have with gasoline. It can go bad if you don't have stabilizers. Um, there's condensation can be a significant issue. And um, it can overwhelm your fuel pumps. So that leads us into natural gas. And natural gas may be an excellent choice if that's already available to the home. Um, it can be very inexpensive. Natural gas has low emissions, um, and it's um, very efficient fuel. Um, there are issues if the natural gas isn't running up to the home. It can be very expensive. Um, it also ha is a little bit vulnerable to a couple of issues, and one of them is flooding. Um, natural gas can um, be shut down if flooding occurs. And also in earthquake situations, um, they will frequently, the first thing they do is shut down the natural gas lines. Um, so you do have to be concerned about that, that you may not have power because somebody else shut down your gas line. Oh yeah, and even in areas that do have natural gas, as Melody was saying, sometimes the best choice would be to put your own propane fuel back there because the installation costs will be a lot lower than digging up your yard to take uh, the main in. But also, and I, and I gotta keep stressing this a lot, you want, in an emergency, your own fuel to control your own generator. And that's a good thing to keep in mind. If you truly want to be off the grid and independent when you need it, that's the way to go is with your own fuel supply of propane gas and your own standby generator. Right. So um, Ed basically just explained what the next slide, which Oh, is, I didn't even see that. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, and it's, it's uh, again, just like natural gas, it's a very clean source of power, low emissions, very efficient, and all of the advantages that Ed just explained make propane an ideal choice for backing up your generator. And by the way, don't worry about the looks of a propane tank. Uh, Melody's going to get into a few ways that you could uh, change the look of a propane tank. My own yard, I have it behind some bushes. I never even know it's there and I could get access to the tank anytime. Right. And this slide will show you the difference. You, um, you can have the above ground tank like Ed just mentioned, which again um, can be very unobtrusive and easy to access. Or you can bury the tank underground and again you just have um, a little mound that is uh, um, shows for um, servicing, refilling, and testing. Um, so that, again, if people have an objection to having a propane tank outside their home, burying it can be an option that doesn't take up any yard space, and it's very attractive.